Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's Garage, I'll be showing you how to coat up some tasty Arduino effects for individually addressable RGB LEDs. As I compose and explain the code, you'll be able to monitor results when needed on the chip itself here, as well as seeing what the LEDs are actually doing live down here. We'll start with simple rainbows and marquees, and before we're done, we'll even be simulating the kinematics of bouncing RGB balls. From there, it's on to stars, comets, and flames. I don't want to just show you how to copy and paste a set of a few handy effects. Instead, I want you to know, to see, to understand, and even feel what's going on with the lights as you code them, so that eventually, you'll know intuitively how to achieve whatever look you're going for. And because I think people learn best that way, I want to make absolutely sure that you can see the code, and hear me explain, and see the LED results at the same time. If needed, we can even watch the LEDs change as I single step through in the debugger. And that live feedback is what I think makes this video series unique. I am trying to keep everything as general as possible so that you can apply it to whatever you hope to build. Not only could you even do all of these in a different language like Python, but the tips and tricks that I will show you work on a wide range of microcontrollers. Thanks to the fast LED library, they can be trivially changed to work on dozens of different brands and types of LED strips. I don't assume you already know anything other than some basic C going in, so links to everything you need are in the description. In case you're playing Arduino buzzword bingo at home, we'll be using C and C++ in Visual Studio Code with Platform I.O. to target the Arduino framework on an ESP32 using the fast LED library. We'll be using WS2812B LEDs, but our code will support many different styles. All the tools and code you'll see here today will work equally well on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Are you ready? Then let's light these candles and get going. So we're going to start off where we left off at the end of last episode, which is a simple hello world LED file that draws a little rainbow. But don't worry, even if you miss that, I'm going to walk you through the file really quick so you'll see what it is and how it works. The first thing I'm going to do is add a header block to the top of the file so that I know what this file is and what its purpose is. Okay, the first thing our file needs to do is include Arduino.h, because we're using the Arduino framework. Obviously, that's the one thing we need to do to support it. Before we include FastLED, which is a library that allows us to communicate with the addressable LEDs, we want to define a symbol called FastLED internal, and that just kind of silences its build. Otherwise, it prints a bunch of banners and stuff that we don't really want, or I don't really want, in the middle of my build process. So, we include FastLED. And these are the definitions that we need in order to interoperate with the little TFT or OLED display on the Helltech module. So this is what the clock line is, what the data line is, and what the reset line is. And that's all you need to know for these. Once you see the constructor below, you'll see where we use these. These are the definitions we need to communicate with the LEDs, which is simply the number of LEDs and what pin they're connected to. It's really that simple. To represent the LEDs, we have an array of however many LEDs we have, but they are color objects, known as CRGB. And they are simply a 24-bit representation, three bytes packed, of the color information for a single LED. Here we have the declaration of the OLED object, which allows us to communicate with the OLED display. And this is the frames per second function. Trivially, it just returns the reciprocal of whatever you pass to it. So if you give it 0.25, it's going to come back and say, well, you're running at four frames a second. However, it also does a weighted average over time so that the value doesn't swing around too wildly. And so that's why, as opposed to just, we could have just divided by one over the number, but this keeps track of a static variable, which does the weighted averaging for us. The setup function, as you likely know, is called once at the beginning of every Arduino project. In this case, it simply sets the pin mode for the two outputs, initializes the serial port, initializes the OLED display, and initializes the LEDs. The LEDs are the interesting part for us. The add LEDs function needs to know what kind of LED we're adding. It can support a wide variety of different types of LEDs. What if I jump to it? Yeah, so this is a list of, I would guess, 25 to 30 different LED types that fast LED supports. Fairly impressive. WS2012B is probably the most common. We have to tell what pin the LEDs are connected to and what color order it's in, believe it or not, because you'd think of all the things they standardized, that would be it. But no, it's kind of up to the vendor as to what order the color bits are in. So in some cases, it's green, red, blue. In some other cases, it's red, green, blue. 
We also have to let it know where we're storing the color data and how many LEDs we're storing it for. I'm going to temporarily set the brightness to 64 here. Um, we have a brightness variable that we are going to keep track of that I am setting to 2, and that's for the camera. If you're doing only a few LEDs, 64, even maybe go down as low as 32 or 16, try those values to see if they work for you. If you've got full power from a 5-volt power supply that's capable of lighting all your LEDs, have at it. But if you're relying on the USB bus to power them, be cautious, set it to a very few LEDs and a low brightness. The loop function in an Arduino project is called repeatedly. We're never going to return, we're just going to draw in a tight loop. That's not necessarily the best way to do it, but it's pretty easy to understand. So during these initial early projects, that's how I'm going to go about it. We're going to blink the LED on the Heltec module, so this simply keeps track of whether that LED should be on or off. And we keep track of our frames per second. We're going to draw a rainbow, and the rainbow needs to know where it's starting because we scroll the rainbow, so this is the point within the color wheel that we're beginning in the rainbow. Delta hue is how fast the rainbow advances while we're actually doing the drawing. So if you have a high number here, it'll be a tightly packed rainbow. If you have a low number, it'll be a spread out rainbow. Delta hue is how fast the rainbow is going to scroll by, how much we advance the hue each time we draw it. Hue density is how tightly packed that little rainbow is. If it's a high number, then the density is very high and the rainbow is very tight. If it's a low number, then the density is very low and the rainbow is stretched out. So within this for loop, which is, if you've not seen this before, just means forever, basically, we're going to toggle the state of the LED. We're going to write that state out to the LED so it updates it and flashes it. We're going to keep track of when our frame began. And this is simply to print to the OLED display. We're going to keep track of how many frames per second we're doing. This prints that information to the display. It also, as a side effect, takes a little time. So if you just call this inner loop without actually doing any drawing, you're going to get about 25 frames per second, because that's about how long it takes to update the TFT display. So it's kind of a cheap throttle. We could set a timer, or we could keep track of time, or we could put delays in, but for now, this is kind of a cheap way of getting about that. Each and every frame, we're going to call the fill rainbow function. And this is a function that's in the fast LED library and is included by virtue of having included fastled.h. So that's where it comes from. It needs to know the color data that we're going to use because that's where it's going to write its color to. The number of LEDs to write and where to begin that initial hue. We're also going to update the initial hue by adding a hue density variable to it each time. This is once per draw. This is maybe a little tricky, this line of code here. It made for a one-liner, so I allowed it. Now I regret it, I think. But For now, just know that it's adding hue density to the initial hue, and then it's going to pass that as the parameter. And again, delta hue was how tight the rainbow should be. We're then going to set the brightness to the G brightness variable, which in my case, I've set as low as 2 in order to accommodate the camera, as I believe I said. You can, if we jump up to it, it's up at the top of the file, you can change yours to try 16, see how that looks for you. Finally, we're going to mark the time of the end of the frame and then pass that elapsed time to the frames per second function, which will figure out how many frames per second we're drawing, do the weighted average, and return it to us so that we can print it next pass on the TFT display. Well, that's it. 98 lines of code, and it will draw a rainbow. It's kind of the bare minimum code that you need to draw a rainbow and update the TFT display. Let's upload it to the chip now and see how it does. All right, it's flashing the chip. So now that we have our skeletal little app that can draw a very simple one-line effect, let's replace that one-line effect with our own effects. The first effect I'm going to show you is a simple marquee, sort of like the old 1930s movie house where the bulbs actually tracked along. In this case, the LEDs will track along and change color. Up at the top of the file, I'm now going to include a new header file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put each effect in a little tiny header file. It's a bit overkill, perhaps, in terms of organization, but it keeps everything separate. Of course, we're getting a warning because there is no such file yet. Let's create it. We'll do File, New File, and save it as. Marquee.h. Naturally, the first thing we should do is add our header block and explain what this file is going to be. I'm 
I'm going to re-include these file headers. That's going to be more than a little redundant, right? Because I'm including them within an include file that's already included. Well, it's safe to do because each of these already makes sure that it's only included once. But the reason I'm doing it is so that we can have this file in the editor and not get include file errors. It also gives us IntelliSense for the FastLED functions. This function will be very close to re-implementing FastLED's fill rainbow, so you'll then have code to see how the fill, well, you already have the code, but we'll go through how a fill rainbow function actually works. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a color, and each time we call this function, we're going to, again, advance that color. Within the drawing, we're going to walk the color wheel as we draw pixels. You'll notice we're getting some red squigglies here because it doesn't know num LEDs. They're actually defined in main.cpp, and then this file is included, so it has no idea yet of what the values are for that. What this loop does is walk through each of the LEDs, set the color, and advance the hue. The set hue function actually takes a CRGB value and then sets the hue in the color wheel between 0 and 255. It's a very quick and easy way to create a color which I believe is always fully saturated, and there are definitions for the various hue values. In fact, we can go back and let's say start on blue. Now we want to draw the walking black spots in the marquee, which are simulating the bulbs that are turned off. By marking scroll as static means that its value will be preserved from one function call to the next. And it will be incremented by one each time the function is called. That is what's going to step the black spots across the marquee. All we have to do is modulus that with 5 so that it wraps around within 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're then going to step by 5 to the end of the LEDs, blocking those ones out. We're going to have a little delay here of another 50 milliseconds because we don't want to run quite at the full frame rate. It's a little too fast for this effect. Let's see how it looks. We replace the fill rainbow with draw marquee. Now we can upload it and see what we get. All right, here it goes. There, that's kind of cool. The color is walking one way and the LED gap is walking the other way, so they're kind of something different. All right, there you go, the super marquee. That about does it for this effect. Let's move on next to Twinkle, but I'm going to split that off into a separate episode because I had the revisit, which took up time at the beginning of the file. We won't have to do that, so we'll have more time to do the actual effect work in each of the upcoming episodes. What with Christmas this year and all, we probably want to write a Twinkle effect and we'll also move on to comets and meteors. If you're liking the whole Dave's Head plus LEDs plus code effect, give this a thumbs up so I know that format is working for you and you find it useful. That's all the next episode, or as much as we can get to next episode. If you're not a subscriber yet, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time here in Dave's Garage.